All right, teammates, 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 we are back once again. If this is your first time listening to the Move Swiftly podcast, welcome to the show. Welcome to the number one show on innovative teamwork. Great to have you. Looking forward to having you back for more. To my regular listeners, you already know what I'm about. Bring you, bring you nothing but the best, bring you best, but nothing but the best, bring you the people that want to help, the people that have a situation, are experts in their field, and they want to do some great things out there. And I have, I mean, <laughs> it's funny too, because Greg, you know, I was listening to you this morning and one of my roles, I teach at a school that's from K through five, right? And one of my roles is to just create a sports program. You know, you're one of the, like, because I'm a former football player and it's called the Creative Center of Education, never got certified, nothing like that. But when I saw what you did with the two words, P-E, performance experience and how it was like whoa he he's kind of changing the game with this i'm like yo i gotta get the guy i got i can't wait to have you on the show to really kind of pick your brain when it comes to a lot of the work you're doing so with all that welcome to the move swiftly podcast well i appreciate you having me man i really appreciate you having me it's, it's good to be on I'm, I'm excited for us to top it up a little bit now you are a a horn frog, the same place as the Danian Tomlinson and, and several other players. You you played some big big time FBS football. I was a former FCS guy, and um, I think the best way to get this thing started off because a lot of times what happens, and I probably a broken record, regular listeners are probably tired of hearing me say this, is when you get sucked into that football circle, that transition into the to like working life and real life and all that stuff is an incredibly, incredibly challenging thing. So the best way to probably start this off is just talk about your background as a football player and then, you know, your time at TCU and how you were able to transition into doing some some cool things, man. Okay. So first of all, I, I appreciate being on here. And, and then to start in that transition, I'll start at the beginning. Baseball. Mm -hmm. Is actually my first love. I love baseball. Really? I was the first sport. <laughs> Absolutely. I was better at it. Um, and I played it all the way up until I got to college. Uh, but football hmm. brought me here, you know. So I, I didn't play organized football until I was in the eighth grade. Uh, my mom thought I was too small, so she wouldn't let me play peewee football. Mm -hmm. And we played a lot of rec, and we had some tremendous coaches. Um, mm -hmm but she just thought I was too little. Uh, so I didn't play organized football till I was in the eighth grade. But that don't mean I wasn't playing football, tackling in the street. It's, it was different. You got to keep remembering we're talking 30 years ago. You know what I mean? So it was different. But I'm glad um, you made that point, and, and I just want to make sure I pause you there to reinforce to a lot of parents out there who specialize their kids. All right. I spent a lot of time as a recruiter, I spent a lot of time as a college scout. I used to work for a company named FBU. And one of the things parents would do would actually reclass kids, make them do eighth grade over and have all these, I mean, spend countless, countless amounts of money on football specific trainers, football seven on sevens, the whole thing. And they're doing that with hopes of getting a scholarship. And I would constantly tell, I'm glad you made that point. I would constantly tell them, you're hurting the kid. They need to be trying every single sport. Get out there. Be, I mean, your living proof example, you just said it, all right? TCU is a no bullshit program. It's a really good program, and it's because you're doing multiple things. So with that, I just, I just want to make sure we don't brush that over for the listeners. Yeah, you got to play, man, in order to yeah. learn how to play, how your body moves, you know, how, what you can and can't do, build confidence. You got to play, and you got to see what that looks like for you. Mm -hmm. um, you know, just to make that point and to get back on track, like you can't, you have to be able to learn concepts uh, or athletics or confidence and then figure out what you like before you go out there and specialize in anything. But um, yeah, man, I played baseball. I played football. I played basketball up until my soft, my soft, through my sophomore year mm -hmm. um, in school. So you know, I, I was athletic. I was an athlete. So I played uh, mm -hmm. But I love the baseball. Football took me to quite a few different places. So football allowed me to play at TCU. Right? I got to Texas by way of football, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and then I was fortunate enough to have the opportunity to get picked up as an undrafted free agent by the then Washington Redskins, which is now the Commanders. Uh, so a hometown it, team, baby. <laughs> yeah, right on, right on. So they took a shot on me, you know. Uh, 
taking a step back, LT was actually my roommate in college. Mm -hmm. uh, so we've been friends since 1997. So, you know, football has afforded me quite a few opportunities along the way. And then when I got cut, which we can get into a little later on, I got cut mm -hmm. and um, I went, I, I never got out of school. So mm -hmm. when I got cut, I went right back to class. Enrolled, right. Yeah, I stayed enrolled, so I, I went right back to class. And right. then I got my degree in education, uh, coached. And so sports has been, it went from hobby to action to profession. I'm mm -hmm. 45 years old, and I still live in athletics. I still deal in a team. So um, athletics has been the thing I've done with my life since I started doing stuff. So let, yeah, let's, let's dive into that because you get cut. And this is something, again, I, I say this all the time, athletes, and it wasn't obviously for you, it wasn't an injury, but I let athletes know you're always one injury away. You're always one injury away from it being over, or you're always in a situation where this game could end for you in the moment. The question is, do you have a plan? Do you have a backup plan? What are you going to do if the NFL just doesn't work out for whatever reason it is? So when you go back, and then I'm assuming you went from D.C. all the way back to TCU, and you say, look, um, is it you're getting your bachelor's in education? Is it, all right, I'm going to get this education degree in. What's the next kind of the next thought in your head towards to say, how am I going to use education from the game? to start to create something because I know playing is not, is probably not going to be in the cards. So everything you just said, mm -hmm. because of my experience, I think about it differently. Mm -hmm. Okay. So for me, baseball was the thing I was best at. Mm. Football was the thing I was doing and I was good at it and it was paying bills. So I'm giving you my perspective now, yeah. according to what I saw. Right. Uh, but what I realized when I was a young and was I can do a lot of things like I'm smart. I knew that like I'm a smart dude. I can do a lot of things. So the plan was to play. The plan was to play professional football. Mm -hmm. Right. So looking at it, what if we took the this approach? It's going to end. It doesn't matter how it's going to end. The athletic part of what you do in your life is going to end. And it's going to end at a time where you still have the opportunity to do multiple things. Hmm. So you don't need a backup plan. You just need to gather and collect skills so you can execute plans. Okay. Right. 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 So if I'm at school, right. Mm hmm. I knew I was smart. I made good grades. I graduated with a three point uh, four something. Uh, mm -hmm. I knew I was getting my degree in education, but education wasn't the backup plan. I just knew I could do that. Wow. You know what I mean? It I was in education throughout. Wow. I wow. could do that. Yeah. So when I'm done with this mm -hmm. or when this is done with me, right? here are the skills and the tools and the resources that I've collected throughout this time so I don't have to be lost. Right. It, it doesn't ever have to be, I do this or bust because all things you do when you're young will come to an end. That's a fact. Physically, you won't be able to do this forever. Mm -hmm. Physically, your prime is gonna end before your 40th birthday. Mm -hmm. Physically, you have your days are numbered in athletics. They actually have dates for them. When you play college ball, it's an end date. It's going right. to end. No matter how hard you work, no matter how hard you try, no matter what you do in school, it's going to end. So gather some skills, get some resources, make sure you create uh, friendships and, and all of those things and work towards other things you can do. Life is not linear, man. Mm -hmm. It's not. So a backup plan is based on the collection of skills you've acquired or the things that you've done or the things you've liked along the way. Learn how to maximize that. Learn how to monetize that. Learn mm -hmm. how it's going to put you in a position to, uh, to, to get what you want. If I would have looked at teaching, mm -hmm. like not a backup plan, but as another resource, right. I would have collected two or three more resources while I was in school right. and executed that. 
Likewise, exactly, exactly. I mean, you know that's a, I think that's a very powerful point that you make. And, and I have to ask you now, because what you're saying is, is it sounds awesome, but I've been on a ton of locker rooms. I played on a ton of different teams and I see when players start to get their college attention. I see what happens to how invincible they feel. They start feeling like they are like they can do no wrong. And there's and I've struggled with this question even when I was a kid because I wasn't that highly touted recruit, but I would see guys who got recruited and I see their mindset gets so their head gets so swelled that they stop working hard. They start thinking that they're actually invincible. And I'm curious, like, how do you challenge those kinds of that, that inevitable feeling that a player is going to get when they start getting attention? Like, for example, even at TC, I'm sure there were guys that, you know, they got all the attention. They start feeling like, man, I may not need to go to class. Da, 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 da. How do you, how do you challenge even some of the young guys that you work with now, especially geez, with social media? <laughs> I mean, you get coaches hitting you up all day, you know, that head gets swelled. What kind of tactics do you keep that do you use to keep them from kind of keep them grounded? For me, it's like your world versus the world, mm -hmm. not in competition with one another, but a real understanding. Like in your world, you know, you have people have shown that you are this. You know, you you yeah. are a man. You should have your confidence. You him, but that's just in that world right there. In the world, you're just another piece. You're just uh -huh. another piece. Like it, uh, you are your your ability, your athletic ability mm -hmm. will only take you as far as the next able body or the next person with the same abilities as you. Right. Skill, understanding, discipline, endurance, all the things you need outside of your world to be successful you got to carry everywhere so you can't be that everywhere it's it's almost like we're asked to be aggressive you know and act in aggression and violence and loud and and, and you get you praised and you get praised for it you do that for three hours on a yeah. saturday and then you do that throughout the week for four hours a day right. and then the moment you step off of the now you got to step back and you got to be calm and you got to be reserved and you can't respond the way that you have been trained to respond in certain situations. I'm not knocking that. I'm saying that's real. That's a reality. Mm -hmm. So you have to be able as a person to at least identify that. Right. Like, like in this world, I'm this because it's mine. I can do what I want to do, but mm -hmm. the world don't care. Got it. You know, that's what I mean. Like it's not linear. I didn't know these things when I was younger. You, how do you know that? You just move into the beat of your drum or whatever drum or your parents' drum or your coach's drum, but you're right. trying to figure out how to catch the beat. Mm -hmm. As you get older, you can look back and say, hey, you know, I had different opportunities. It wasn't football or bus. I am smart. Mm -hmm. You know, I can't pick up things. The world is ever changing. Right. The world is nothing like it was in 1997 when I went to school. Mm -hmm. the school is not like it was. The stadium is not like it was. Right. The people aren't like they were. The right. materials, the world has changed. Right. So you got to. So, all right, so you you got your education degree and then did you immediately go into coaching or did you, you know, maybe get a tryout? You know, how, how did you transition into PE and what you're doing now where you kind of have a unique concept and you're, you're serving, um, serving multiple kids, actually you're helping them with scholarships, you're helping them get advice. And it's not just football that you're serving as well, right? It's right. more than just one sport. That was a, that journey was, uh, had some things going on. And so for about a year after I got cut, I kept trying to play. I kept trying to yeah, stay training, right? Yeah. So this is how that went. So I got cut. I went back to school. I was finishing. I had a semester left, right? Right. Uh, so I went in August. I finished that. And then I had to just finish part of the spring because as a, uh, when I was in the education program, I finished all, all my classes. All I had left was student teaching. Student teaching uh, was, I think, six or eight weeks. It's not very long. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I went back out because I played for four years at TCU. You get you get five to play four. Right. Okay? So 
I, I played as a freshman. Before, way before transfer portal days, guys. Correct. <laughs> yeah. So I played like, so I, I'm trying to paint the picture. So, right. you know, it, it, the story makes sense. Right. So um, I played as a freshman and I was done with football at TCU. So I went and talked to the baseball coach and went to baseball in the spring. Ah. I hadn't picked up a bat in four years. Right. You know, but I had a great spring. Like mm-hmm. I really went out there and, and was out. It was baseball. It's what I had done. My now you life. you were, I'm assuming, a shortstop or no? I was a center fielder and a pitcher. Yeah, that, I was an that's outfielder, a, and, and that's pitcher. another part I did because you were a DB, if I'm not mistaken, right? Correct. Okay. Correct. Again, yeah. families, parents, DB, shortstop, center fielder, the lateral movement, the covering ground, all of these things are translating to other sports. I just want to make sure I'm making that point all right? because I, again, I'm, I'm located in Florida now and I there's so many trainers, so many people that this I'm football, 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 understand, look, it's a lot easier on your body. Go do some baseball, go do some, go do something else. So they just develop. Anyway, go ahead and continue before I get going again. <laughs> now, that's a great point. I, I I won't argue with that. Right. So, you know, I went back, I played baseball, but, and I, I had a good spring. <clears throat> so with that, I had to uh, make a decision because in order to play baseball during the season, I would have had to re-enroll in school. And I just, I wasn't going to do that. Mm-hmm. It was, you know, so I didn't, right? Uh, so I continued to try to play football after I got cut. You know, Canada mm-hmm. has some opportunities in arena football when that was a thing. I, I didn't really want to play indoor football. Some teams were interested. Right. I was interested in Canada. And I didn't really get a contract there. Um, was, uh, was NFL Europe around during that time? Uh, yes, it was. I had some conversations there. But with that, you know, I was teaching. You know, because I had a job. Uh, yeah, I, yeah, yeah, so the re the way it worked was I finished my student teaching. One of the teachers uh, left because she got pregnant, so I could finish. Oh in man, that you space. Oh. Yeah, I, yeah, oh. I could finish in that space as the, the slack, uh, permanent, baby. permanent sub. Yeah. Right? So I, I it, and it set me up because I had my degree. All I had to do was get certified. Mm-hmm. It set me up to have a job going into the the year. So I had a job during that time. I was still trying to play. So I want you to think about this. I'm a young man teaching. I ain't got no real bills. I just got me a crib. Um, You know, I was doing all right, but I was miserable, bro. Yeah. I was dying inside. Yeah. You know, I was because I didn't stop playing football. Football stopped. Yeah, that, that mentality. Oh, I, I know that feeling, man. I, I told in hell. my freshman year and no. this close to quitting. And then I, I saw what my high school was doing, the major things. I'm like, I'm not stopping. I cannot stop until I get this done. Or <laughs> I'll be out there 40 years old still trying because there's something in you when you play this game, when you really do it, guys, you can't stop until you actually achieve that goal. So go, yeah, I, I hear you taught that you built like that. You set goals based on dates and results. Your life is based on results. Okay. People praise you for the results. But um, so I taught for two years. I was mm-hmm. teaching school, and then um, my good friend of mine called me. Uh, we played at TCU together. He got a job at Emporia State, mm-hmm. and asked me if I wanted to coach the DBs. It was like third of the pay, right. um, but. You do what you, you take do, the risk. You do what you love. You take the risk. Hey, man, I go out there. So that's how my coaching career started. Wow. So I coached for a few years. And in that coaching, I trained athletes. I worked with some skill development. Mm-hmm. After I, I was done coaching, I got my uh, certification as a personal trainer. Mm-hmm. 18, 19 years later, man, I got 30 certifications on what you would consider a master trainer. I've coached mm-hmm. at every level, Division One. Division one AA or FBS, FCS, mm-hmm. uh, Division two, um, and then multiple sports in high school. Fast forward to 2014. Right. 2014 is when PE was born, and the concept was to give these kids the avenue or the vehicle through whatever sport they choose to understand the recruiting process. And in that, I did fitness and skills and adult fitness but that was that's the premise and then been doing that ever since I had my own facility for 
uh, seven or eight years. It mm -hmm. shut it down right after COVID, uh, but the programs live. So I still run developmental programs. I still run elementary programs. We still do personal training. I have some instructors, you know, a team of instructors who help. Uh, we actually run a league through a great friend of mine, business partner, Brent Springfield, the Elementary Sports League. It's right. a recreational sports league with development infused in that league. So, yeah, man, it's been a road of athletics. Right. You know, it's my trip or journey has been these stops all along the, the road to and through athletics. I understand how important it is. So you, you've seen a lot in your time in athletics, all right? And right now we're in unprecedented times, all right? We, we really are, all right? I wrote a book about it. I vented about it. Now the, now the Power Five schools, they're talking about, you know, not letting walk-ons come through, you know, which puts more pressure on parents to try to get their kids seen There's situations but when I coached high school with look check this man we I coached high school for two seasons and our star player after a seven, a whole day of seven on seven right he his dad goes and takes him to Temple University and he tears his groin and it bothers him throughout the whole year all because he's trying to get a scholarship now he's basically a d3 guy but you take him to Temple thinking that you're going to get an offer what can you suggest? So what would you say you, your take on everything you've seen from when you played with the, the greats like LT, Mr. Humble, you know, humble, give the, give the ball to the ref, to now when you look at the recruits now and look at the situations now, what can, what, like just what's your overall thoughts on how things are and then how you would improve it if you had the ability to? It's interesting out there right now, man. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the framework, I, I just think it needs some guardrails, man. I, I, you know, anything, anytime things change, you got to put guardrails around it. Um, I think for parents, the most important thing is to understand these concepts. Being seen is no longer difficult. Mm -hmm. That's real. You can be seen. In fact, if you understand the, the, the landscape, mm -hmm. you, you can put yourself in a winning position. Kids are getting paid, you see it. So you, now everybody should understand that it's business. It's much more than just getting your education paid for. Mm -hmm. Use that to your advantage. What, what are they looking for? Where are people getting opportunities and money? And where do I fit in that? The mm -hmm. portal has made it difficult for high school kids to get scholarships at high level programs. Mm -hmm. That's real. Why not? If I can go get a kid, I can snatch a kid up at the portal with experience, with gameplay experience that can take me to where I need to go and somebody's going to pay for that. That's what I'm going to do. Exactly. Coming out of high school, I need to understand that landscape and that framework and put myself in a position to make moves. Right. That's it. That's all. Be honest about the assessment. Don't go chasing the opportunity to get visible because being seen is not difficult these days. Select the best opportunities for you to be seen. Prepare for those opportunities because now there is no just play. Everything is organized play or training, right? right? You got to take advantage of that. I used to be one to complain about these things, and they messing this up and they taking this away and it ain't like it used to be. Well, here's the reality. It's not like it used to be, mm -hmm. but it's not that difficult to get the information on how you success, how you can succeed. Right. And in some areas, the investment is more affordable than the cost of trying it out. Now, as a, and I, I know you're not coaching now, but you, like you mentioned, you were at D Division Three, Division Two programs, FCS programs. How would you like? Are they adjusting well to this new landscape? You know, how would you say like how? How do you see the future? And I, I feel it because again, I'm a small school guy. I'm D two FCS. I transferred from the D two to an FCS program, and I look at the business now, and I'm like, I don't know if they're gonna survive this. Because it's like they're not filling up the state of if we even if we did fill up our stadiums, 
we still ain't gonna have enough money to compete with an Ohio State and what they do in a field or even uh, anybody in the power five. So what exactly do you like? How do you I guess the question would be what's your overall take from the perspective of the smaller school coaches and what can they be doing? Because again, you run your own business, you're doing your thing, you got your certification. So you're not just a coach at this point, you're actually someone that could service clients and have your own business. Most of these division two coaches and these FCS coaches, they don't do that. They don't have the presence of mind of doing that. So, you know, speak, at least give some, at least help them out in some way, shape, form, or fashion, I guess. Well, well, I know, I know, I know coaches on every level. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and, and it's a great one. It really is. Uh, it's really not about you, it's in conversations with them and and and, and understanding they um, you don't compete you, you can't compete with them you have to find ways to move more efficiently and like I said like it's so recruiting is not what it was you know you're not recruiting a kid once. and hoping you can afford to keep him there. So at the lower level, you got to figure out ways to maximize the opportunity for these kids for two years. Mm -hmm. With the understanding is if we build a system like this, we understand what's coming through here. And it's just difficult, Nate. Money, mm -hmm. time, recruiting opportunities. Uh, so you, you just got to figure out what you're shooting at, what you're aiming at. That's the biggest thing. What am I shooting at? What am I trying to, what target am I trying to knock down? Right. Same thing for us in, at the E, like uh, we can service three, we focus on service in three different groups of kids, elementary, middle school, and high school. Now, we do quite a bit of work with college kids and pros coming out and things of that nature. Right, but, but that, that's what I was going to ask you too, because when you transition into PE now, there's the the aspect of female sports. And again, one of my first jobs in college, out of college was I was a college scout and female sports was primarily the target. They were struggling before and they depend on third party, like qualified third party people, trainers, those kinds of people to make sure that they can go find female athletes that want to play. Have you seen a drop off in female athletic participation? Have you seen anything when it comes to how all of this is affecting the girl sports or the female athletes that you train? I've only seen a growth, an explosion in female uh, oh, yeah? sports. So, so, oh, man, it's been crazy because they get the opportunity now through uh, AAU and select and, and volleyball uh, clubs and tournaments and basketball and like they get so many opportunities i've seen nothing but a, an influx especially in the growth of female athletes training because now they're working towards uh a, a bigger opportunity you know they're giving scholarships to girls for flag football now yeah. you gotta prepare for that yeah i think that's fantastic you know they, they they're expanding the the uh visibility now of of girl sports in multiple channels so these girls got something to shoot for and they have a they have a they understand now that there is a pathway, mm -hmm. you know, they can actually get there without hoping to get there, but set themselves up for an opportunity. It's just it's so much out there. Mm -hmm. It's hard to know which which road to go, or how to navigate those waters. So that's what you work on and that's what you work towards. Right. Also, too, I've I've done several NIL deals myself and the female athletes were probably the best to work with because they're and one of the things I do explain to them, there really isn't a pro league for them. That's like a pot of gold. So they use it as a paid internship opportunity. They use it as an opportunity to say, all right, look, I mean, whatever. I mean, the WNBA. Yeah, but there's not really a pro league that's as popular as the NBA and the NFL. So when it comes not to as popular, I'm going to interject, <laughs> okay, okay. not as popular, but there are some that actually exist and are getting visibility and growing in popularity. For example, I've been watching over the past month, I think it's called Athletes United, a, a professional girls softball league. And softball. it's great softball. It's right. tremendous softball. The girls play hard. They're all, all Americans from FBS schools, and they play like played on Olympic teams. It's tremendous softball. Uh, then you got soccer. You got 
that's not yeah. the that's not the World Series. No, it's it's, okay, it's they play against each other. It's athletes unite. I think that's what it's called. And then they, so they give these girls points for. It's amazing. It's really right. good softball. Right. So that's something to work towards. You got, of course, soccer. Soccer is the world's number one sport. They got professional girl soccer leagues, and then you got you be playing World Cup, all of that stuff. And mm -hmm. uh, volleyball. I've seen an influx in professional volleyball. So the opportunities for girls have expanded tremendously. Uh, flag football, you know, football's it's, big. It's, it's, big. it's, it's yeah. huge. <laughs> we want more girls in our flag football league. You know, it, it's it's huge uh, because it gives them an opportunity to develop and see another path for success. Because the truth of the matter is, it's going to end. It's going to end. So if we start preparing from the end date, working backwards, it gives you a better understanding of your path. I didn't know that, you know, you push forward, you grind on, but right, right, right. I've seen it from both sides. So it's like, okay, I ask everybody in consults. Yeah, that actually, what, uh, actually that like, uh, yeah. you, and, and I'm glad you, you put it to the audience and you put it to the athletes as bluntly as you can put it, it will end. What are the tactics that you take towards kind of, I mean, you don't want to, crush a kid's dream like I try to I try to say that in the like we don't want to take that dream away from you we just know it will end how do you put it to them in a daily basis and show them that hey you're going to be there for them whether they make it to the league or not or whenever it ends your organization and the things you're about you're going to kind of support them regardless of how far athletic playing takes you because we don't coach the result we coach the journey Wow. That's why I always ask wow. how much time, how much time we got. Like, what are we working towards? How much time we got? Well, we're working towards a camp that's gonna be this summer, and we got to get ready. Okay, so I got three weeks. How much time am I gonna see you in these three weeks? Well, you, we got to do this. Okay, now I understand what what plan can be put in place mm -hmm. to execute the best opportunity. Mm -hmm. Okay, for you on that day. It, it has an end date. It has a date. And so that's that's not killing dreams. That's preparation. It's like weddings. You got to prepare for the wedding. Six months out, here's the date. You work backwards from there. All right, so we got to do this. We got to do that. We got to get this done. We got to pay this. Same thing. All right, you graduate in 2028. Got it. What are you trying to do? I really want to play softball. Really. You're really good. Well, let's see how, how good you are today. Mm -hmm. Okay. Here are the things that we need to work on right now. You're not, because here's what I do know. You're not going to get a scholarship tomorrow. Mm -hmm. We got plenty of time. So why are you anxious? Why are you worried about it? We got a plan. And we execute that plan. And along the way, we're going to screw the plan up. So you adjust the plan. Like, that's the way the work. That's the advantage hmm. in today's world. You have enough information and enough avenues and resources to develop a plan, adjust that plan, and execute that plan. That's why we get paid. I've I got 33 certifications. Mm -hmm. We've trained thousands of people. All we do is write and fill prescriptions, diagnosis, prognosis. Here's where you are. Here's where you want to be. Here are the steps that we understand need to be taken to get there. But first, we're gonna work in this first three months and see if we can get these steps done. Like that's the end. I got to make sure you said we do not coach the result. We coach the journey. All right. And this is important. I, I have been around the block and this, I got to get a certain 40 time. I got to hit a certain amount on the bench, all the results driven coaches, results driven trainers. So you can say, Oh, I got this one to run this time and all that. You got to remove that kind of remove that and focus on the journey of the athlete. And I think that's a very valid point that you made because in this game, it's so in regardless of the sport, it's so easy to get caught up in the results. We're in a results-based business and it's so easy to get caught up in the results in regards to development. But when you focus on the journey and the process, those are the things that are going to last with an athlete forever and ever and ever and they could take those tools when it when it comes time for them to transition into adulthood so you know i do want to be i want to be very respectful of your time can you like what's well let me let right. me let me make sure we understand the point okay because i don't want to get off, off of that right that's somewhat what i'm saying what i am saying is this though 
You got to run a certain time, right? Mm -hmm. That's the result you need. I can't coach that. I can't coach you on game day. I got to coach you all the way up to that point so that's the result we get. I'm not focused on running a 4-3 or 4-4. I know that's what you got to do. This is where you are. Here are the steps. I'm focusing on the steps. So when it's time for you to run, we get the result. You could like you're trying to win. Mm -hmm. I can't focus on winning on Monday. We play on Friday. I got to focus on making sure my team knows what they're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. I I coach the game on Friday. I can't coach the kids. The result is going to be what it is. I've been preparing for it. I understand what we have to do. So you, it's not our job to focus on that result. Let the kid focus on that. Let them be confident about based on the steps that they've been taking. But we got to get to that. I can't focus. All right, we got to get that. Okay, what is that? That's a 4-4. Four, four. Got it. What are they running? A 4-5. or five. Okay, how much time do I have? Mm -hmm. I, I got to focus on that. You see what I'm saying? So when it's time to run, you just run. I can't stand there by the line and coach you. I can't hope you get this right. The result is going to be the result. And ultimately, actually, too, what you're touching on, too, is mental toughness. It's mental toughness for the athlete. You know, it, it's actually them understanding at some point you got to trust your instincts and let it go. You gotta know, let it go. You gotta let it go. You've done all this <laughs> you, stuff. So you you know what it's like to give up a touchdown, and then you gotta get your ass right back the next play, <laughs> the Listen, next bro, play, the next drive, and you gotta say, "Look, it never happened. All this ground I gotta cover. You gotta put it out your system and just go out the next play." <laughs> Listen, bro. When I played, this is the truth. I didn't want when I was playing. I wasn't worried about playing. Like once I was playing, I was playing. Mm -hmm. I yeah, I looked up at the scoreboard, but. Hey, I got you, homeboy. I can't, I can't worry. I got you. At the end, you know, we'll be. I, I expect us, the scoreboard, to be in our favor because all the stuff I did during the week. Period. I can't worry about the result on game day. I got a the. I coach the process. Yeah. I coach the progress in the process. So when game day comes, the result, the result is expected. Mm -hmm. Uh, I mean, and man, I, I could talk to you for hours, man. But <laughs> I do, I do want to, I do want to make sure I am respectful of because I want to. I, I know you mentioned that you had to close the facility, but you obviously have some things going on. Like, can you just kind of talk a little bit about what's next for PE? What you got coming down the pipeline? How can you know you could put all that stuff out there now? Man, we got a tremendous partnership with uh, Seeds Sports. The owner, uh, Brent Springfield, has created uh, a masterpiece. It's an uh, elementary sports league where we take the um, kids at, in, in a feeder school, at an elementary school, mm -hmm. and we put them on teams in their respective sport from their school. And the high school kids – in that feeder coach the elementary school kids in that league so wow. the high school football kids will coach the elementary flag kids and they play a season of 10 games and then at the end they play a seasonal tournament and you crown a champion right well in that pe does the development the speed and skill development for the athletes on those teams and we take the high school kid and we teach them how to train those kids so now they have a trade now they interact with the kids in their community and they have a fan base right so they can build their skills mm -hmm. right there in their own community so that is is tremendous you can find seed sports on facebook and instagram you find pe on facebook at the performance experience you can find us on instagram at performance experience twitter at performance experience and i encourage you to look at our youtube stuff we got a lot of great drill stuff on youtube at performance experience and we're going to update that page and have podcasts like this on it where we talk right. about things that we think are relative uh, but yeah that's where you can find us that's what we're doing and we're still training them up man we're still training the kids up you, you can email me at uh, info at pesportsandrec.com. 
Mm-hmm. And if you're in the Dallas Fort Worth Metroplex area, I'm confident we can help you. Well, that's what I was going to ask you. Is there a plan to at least expand out to different cities? Is, is that something that's part of the vision? And how what would that kind of look like for you? Yeah, right now we're in Keller, uh, running that program there. We're working. We've done work in Grapevine, Texas. We're all through the Metroplex. Um, it, it, as far as people want the programs and they expand, that's where we're going to go. And then when we can make the digital plat, excuse me, platform be what I want it to be, we'll mm-hmm. we'll make it worldwide. Uh, got some great instructors. Uh, we've been doing it for a while, man. We've been doing it. For <laughs> I see. Quite I some see. Time. You know, thousands <laughs> of people have been trained, so we've been doing it for quite some time. And you, you in that area, man? Texas football. Uh, I, I only heard stories. I've only heard stories about it, but yeah, it's, it's a whole nother monster. It's a man. different, it's, a different beat, but. I do want to make sure I make the point. You're not just a football guy. And this is important. This is very important, guys. Not just a football guy. He trains all sports, trains mindset, trains athletes in general. The athletic mindset is something that you really, it's really going to, I actually just wrote an article about this, but you look at the top leaders of the world, be it politics, be it business, be it whatever it is, you just point back at some point, all of them were athletes. They were athletes at some point because of that results-driven mindset and just the the ability to build confidence. So, you know, with all that, Greg, I want to, here's how I close out all the shows. I want you to use your imagination a little bit. You are back in the the DMV, I believe at that time it was Norv Turner was our head coach at that point. No, nah, it was uh, Marty Schottenheimer. Marty, Marty Schottenheimer. Marty, Marty Schottenheimer. Schottenheimer. Well, he because he left San Diego and then he coached LT. But anyway, anyway, I want you to pretend that you that guy, Marty Schottenheimer, said, "Hey, best of luck to you, man." Uh, but we're gonna go in another direction. Pretend that that young man came in this Zoom room. Give him some words of encouragement, and we'll officially close. But that young man was devastated because that happened. Yeah. You know what? I, today, I would tell that young man, hey, listen, um, it's a lot of roads you can take. You're a smart dude. Uh, don't get caught up on what was going to end anyway. Amen to that. And I'm sure you're helping a lot of other young men who are going to be, again, it's going to be just part of the numbers, man. 1% makes it. So it's going to be quite a few that are going to need to hear that as well. So with all that, fellow teammates, continue to move swiftly. We will talk more soon.